This is the last video in a small series covering crowds in Houdini. In this video, I control the crowd agents and where they walk within the scene using a curved path that I draw onto the terrain. This last step in the project works very well with the previous stuff built in the last three videos because the project file is built directly from the previous ones. But if you get stuck watching at some point and you start questioning how things are set up, be sure to check out the previous videos where I show you step by step and completely from scratch how things are built. The pop steer path node is a pop node that affects particles, but um, we can use it inside uh, inside the crowd simulation as well to affect the agents. What it does, um, you input a curve into this node and the curve will be the path that you want the agents to follow, like sort of like a walk path that you want them to follow. And this node, um, it applies additional force to the agents using the normals on the point on the curve that you provide. And it uses those normals, normal directions on the curve it affects, that's how it, uh, it affects the agents around it to follow. That's the direction that it'll keep feeding in into the agents. Well, the, the curve that you create will consist of a lot of points on it. And each point will have a normal attribute. And this describes the direction that the curve at that point is heading toward. And this will be the influencing direction for the agents. So the agents will follow these directions on the curve from the beginning of the curve to the end of the curve. So when agents reach the end of the curve, so that's like the last point on the curve and that's the last um, influential direction that it has, what it'll do, it'll go back to the first point on the curve and continue uh, following the direction, repeat all over again from the beginning point to the end and then just keep going and going. So let's see how this uh, looks like in action. Let's hook this up here. Now we need a curve. So let's go and create a curve first. Come up here. Um, now the curve will be on the ground, will be on our terrain. So let's create another geometry node. I'm just going to put it up here. Curve path, I'll call it. So we want to see the terrain. So I'm going to put that on ghost. Um, and I'm just going to throw down a curve node. Select this. Come over here to the 3D viewport. Mouse over here. Press enter. So now you can draw on this uh, uh, plane. Oh. Zigzaggy. Okay. And then once you reach the, the last point, in order to exit, just press escape. The top. It's the uh, left topmost button on the keyboard. So that'll end it. Now, um, what you can do is resample this curve to provide more resolution. So that's way too much. So that's good enough. That's a lot of points. I'm just gonna... Now we're not going to render the curve path. So remember to remove that. And I'm not going to render the walls as well. So let's come back here, go to the dump net. Let's go back to the pop steer path. Now we're going to have to find, oh, and I like to port everything over into this context. So let me just, I'm just going to copy that over and I'm going to rename this curve path. So this come up here, go, let's collapse all these. Oh, curve path right here. So output path. So curve path, output path into this object. Curve path. Okay, let's go in here. Uh, path, let's come in. Crowd.net, because I brought it into this context. Curve path. Curve look up. Let's reset the sim forces, uh, uh, markers. Turn on our. Okay, so I hope you can sort of see that they're zigzagging. Now let's go up. Let's go up. Oh, I must have. Okay, maybe I will render this, but I will I will move the ground. Oh, it's walking right through the walls. So once you enter something like that, and you have to like readjust uh, the pop obstacles. I might have to make the obstacles a little more stronger so that they don't walk through the walls. 
basically, if you really don't want them to walk through the walls, this pop steer obstacle has to have greater weight than the pop steer path. So let's reduce this force. Let's reduce it to five. Uh -huh. Restart it. I think it's still walking through. Yeah, it's still walking through. There's another way that we can fix this is that I think it's because the last point is pointing outwards and every and they're shooting all the particles are shooting out to so go to the curved path so they're still not following the last one they're getting shot out for some reason this one is not this it, it's shooting out too far this, it's not for every point it applies a force to it so th the problem is there's so many points here pointing in that direction it's it's there they're not they're having a trouble they're having trouble turning in order to help it I'm gonna cheat oh oops so I'm gonna help it a little bit Hopefully they'll direct them in the right direction. Oh, let's see how this goes. Let's do this. Okay, this helps it a lot better. So we have them zigzagging everywhere. We finally reached the end of this mini series. I did have a lot planned for crowds, so I'll save that for future videos. At first, I wanted to use crowds to create some educational videos that illustrate how the current situation with COVID-19 is spreading so quickly and how social distancing is the best solution we have at this time. That video is still in the works because it's taking forever to render it. I thought I would upload this mini series first and encourage anyone interested to use crowds to create more awareness about COVID-19 and social distancing to help the public and community understand what's going on. I made some icons that can be used in your projects. I hope you can use these icons to make media content to keep reminding the public and community to maintain social distancing and keep washing our hands. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.